G'day YouTube, one MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Wednesday morning here in Australia and the market is down, so taking quite a tumble. So again, we got up to that $3 trillion mark and boom, we just got hit pretty hard and we've been going down ever since. Now we're waiting to see exactly how far we're going to come down. And again, it wasn't Bitcoin hitting any certain price. It wasn't Ethereum hitting any certain price. I believe, anyway, at least it was the market cap. It hit that $3 trillion mark and people just... I think, number one, there was a combination of things. Number one, people took some profits. Then a lot of the leverage longs that people were getting into also got wrecked. And then there's this story over here that Mt. Gox rehabilitation plan is now final and binding. So basically, I think there's a hundred and something thousand Bitcoin that are about to be uh, given back to people who lost money in the Mt. Gox, Mt. Gox hacks. Now, it's nowhere near all of the Bitcoin that was lost. But the market is reacting to that. And I think they're a little bit scared that these Bitcoin are all suddenly going to flood the market. And look, even if they did, could there be a bit more of a price correction? Absolutely. And I think they're saying in the next few weeks, uh, these Bitcoins should hit the market by sort of the end of November, maybe early December. And I think that's what's playing into a lot of what we're seeing at the moment. But look, even if all 100,000 did by somehow miracle get sold, they wouldn't push the price down that far. Could we go into the 50s? Absolutely. Into the 40s? Oh, I'm not sure there'd be enough to push it down that far. But I definitely could see us getting down to maybe 58,000 or so. And we'll look at the Bitcoin chart very soon. But I think there's a combination of all of those things that is the reason why the market's going down at the moment. I don't think it's one specific thing. But definitely, again, big solid numbers. So when Bitcoin maybe hits 80,000, probably see a bit of a correction. Again, when the market uh, total cap hits around about sort of, you know, $4 trillion or something like that, once we get through the three, probably see a bit of a correction. It's big numbers that are usually where people take profits. Now, not always, but they're just things to consider. Again, you know, Ethereum hitting 6,000, I think, will probably be a pretty good cue. I mean, Ethereum, I think, got close to 5,000. So, again, there's a number of things that we're playing into it. You know, Bitcoin was at 69,000. Ethereum was at 4,900. So, again, I think it's a combination of things that have led to the sell-offs. But also, particularly, there was just a lot of people going long. They were getting too bullish. That's why I don't do leverage trading. Every time everyone gets super bullish, you can guarantee a big dump's coming in. And, you know, the big players, they work out what, uh, how far do they have to push it down to wreck most people who've gone, you know, too heavy in the leverage. That's why I think in the normal markets, you don't have more than 3 to 5x leverage. I think that's the maximum. It's only the crypto markets that have stupid stuff like 10x and 20x and 50x and yeah, that kind of stuff. It's just too easy to get wrecked. All everyone sees is, oh man, imagine it goes up and I'm on 50x. Yeah, that's going to be great, but the chances are you're probably going to get wrecked because it only has such a small margin for it to go down and you just get liquidated, hence why I don't play with leverage. But anyway, the market down to 2.69 and look, we may be going lower that's the scary part again i think bitcoin could push down to about 58 it already did it wick down there i think we may get some daily candle closes uh pushing down that way over the rest of the week but again never financial advice just personal opinion all right bitcoin dominance risen ever so slightly but not really much a bit of volume but that's to be expected people are buying the dips i've been buying some of these dips i haven't gone all in uh just because I think it could go lower. Bitcoin price again, 60,500. I think we could definitely go lower. And Ethereum gas price is still not great. All right, we can see it generally looks like a bit, a bit of a bloodbath, but there are things that have done all right. As we can see, AVEX there, and there's always outliers. So what's done well in the last 24 hours, considering the market's down 6%? That's a pretty big move. So the Sandbox and Wax, these are two projects that I really want to get into and they have absolutely pumped. Uh, and we're going to have a look at them very, very shortly. Uh, in that whole metaverse, uh, metaverse space, sorry, and NFTs and all that kind of stuff. So these are two that I really want to get into, but I just didn't buy any. And I did buy some things and we'll go and have a look at those shortly. But I mean the sand up nearly 20%, wax up 13.5%, not too far from 14%. And look, they're the biggest movers. And then we got IOXT and AVAX with some small moves. And then we're basically, you know, getting into the stable coins where even there it losses. So the 
the gains are very minimal. We had two really good ones and then just a couple of kind of okay ones. Again, the market's down 6% and possibly going down more. We'll have to wait and see. So what's fared the worst in the last 24 hours? In the top 100, Zcash, KuCoin, OneHarmony, Litecoin down, near Dash, Mina, Tron, uh, VeChain, there we go, big, you know, double-digit losses from uh, all of these. Not big double-digit losses, but any double-digit loss I consider to be kind of big. And then we just got plenty of single-digit losses. So again, it's not the end of the world, but we definitely could be going lower. And that's the scary part. So let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. So as we can see, now I was saying just the other day, I wouldn't be surprised if Bitcoin didn't come down somewhere here around that kind of $58,000 level. And look, that's basically exactly where we tested, $58,500. Now we could be coming down, and I wouldn't be surprised if over the next few days come the weekend, we maybe retest uh, some of these uh, up this uptrending channel because we can see we've been bouncing around it for a while now again we all got really excited uh, by this pendant sort of thing that had formed and again everyone thought all right and even I still think we are going to 88,000 eventually but just too many people went long and it was that leverage stuff and so the big players go righty out now's the time to dump they'll put in a short and then they'll sell so even though they're selling <laughs> their Bitcoin, you know, they're probably three, four, five X leverage on their shorts and things like that. So they double, triple their money and then they set in buy orders as well from the money they're making. So they can really make some big moves. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not easy to do that. You really have to have a lot of Bitcoin, but it can definitely be done. So again, we'll have to wait and see whether this is done yet. But what is it? What kind of move have we seen? So, I mean, there we go. That's a 14% correction. And I mean, really, I think 14% is probably a little bit rich because we're using the wicks. Let's go from actually here. Just down to here. It's only a 10% loss over the last few days. So that's pretty small in Bitcoin standards. So I would be thinking like maybe another 10% uh, thereabouts. So that could take us, what's a 20% loss? There we go, taking us somewhere down to around about 53,000. Now, I'm actually not expecting that. That was a bit more than what I thought. I definitely think we're going to sort of come down to somewhere around about here. And we're going to bounce off this mark over the next few days, if it's to happen at all. Again, never financial advice, just something, something I'm looking out. So I'm really looking for an actual candle close for Bitcoin down in the kind of 58,000s. Uh, over the next few days to the weekend before we then probably bounce around here for a while. But again, there's no guarantees in life. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe this is it. And sometime today, sometime tomorrow, because we're already getting uh, close to the end of the day over stateside. So maybe tomorrow we just have a quick recovery. We'll have to wait and see, but I'm not sure. So as I said, Mt. Gox, they're looking to, you know, finally compensate those who they can. But again, I think it works out to if you lost 10 Bitcoin in the Mt. God hacks, Mount Gox hacks, you're getting about one Bitcoin back. So a tenth of roughly what you put in there. Now, don't get me wrong, that'd suck. But when this happened, Bitcoin was only worth $700. So even if you you know, lost 10 Bitcoin and you're only getting one back, that's still around about $60,000 worth of Bitcoin compared to, you know, 10, uh, 700, $7,000 worth. So you're still, you know, not quite a 10x off your money, but you're doing, all, you're doing all right. So I think that has played a part in what's happened. Now, some big news from Polygon. They're finally, uh, not finally, but they are now launching their ZK Stark scaling solution. And it's for DAP uh, deployments. Now, one application for ZK Starks is for use in complex decentralized finance or things such as decentralized car insurance, healthcare products, due to the need for identity verification. Now, ZK Starks and similar schemes can redact sensitive information, so this is important, on digitalized assets such as driver's license or passport copies, as well as reduce their size for fast verification by blockchain participants. So again, it's not just scaling it's also privacy. It would ensure that nodes can uh, certify the authenticity of such documents without them coming into contact with users' actual personal data, thereby diminishing privacy concerns and establishing trust for DeFi products. So again, Polygon, this is something, uh, you know, I, I sold some the other day, not a whole lot, a very small amount. 
and I thought Polygon is going to have a a launch because they've just been traveling flat for a while and now that there's been uh, this bit of a dip I'm looking to maybe buy back into Polygon again uh, I'm I'm not putting too much money into the market just yet because look it may go lower and we still could get that 20% correction so we could see Bitcoin down at sort of $53,000 over the next few days it's completely possible I just don't know where we're at. So I've deployed some cash, still got a, a good, decent amount of cash sitting on the side to see what happens. And look, if it all just starts to go back up again, then all good, it doesn't matter. I've still got cash on the side. I've taken some profits. I've also bought back into a few things. All right, this I really liked. Ripple has outlined possible regulatory framework for crypto industry in the US. So again, this court case is still going on and we're still waiting to get a resolution. But Ripple, you know, like them or hate them, they are trying to get better regulation for all of crypto, not simply just Ripple, crypto in general. So they're talking about innovation sandboxes, applying for existence frameworks, existing frameworks on crypto, and communication between the public and private sectors were included in their suggestions. Now, what I liked here was the, pro the proposal was designed to address and remedy the specific challenges to the industry. So this just isn't about Ripple. And so again, hate Ripple, they're fighting for crypto. You don't have to like the company, you don't have to like XRP the token, but we should be supporting Ripple because they are fighting for the entire crypto community. Now the company said the safe harbor proposed by SEC Commissioner Hester Pierce under which network developers would have a grace period to build without being subject to certain federal laws would be necessary to incentivize innovation and that's what they want to do they want to incentivize it still has to be done in a safe way but you don't want to hamper uh, and restrict innovation because we need to continually adapt the old financial system we know is broken it is failing it is going to come to an end at some stage we all know it the dollar can't be kicked down the road forever it just you know all fiat currencies eventually fail uh, I can't see the US dollar being any different, so we need a new system. Now, Ripple have come out and acknowledged, though, that such a measure may not address the mature projects in the space. Again, so things like Ripple, Ethereum, Bitcoin. But, I mean, Bitcoin and Ethereum have already been deemed not security, so it's others. Now, they support legislation applying to digital asset space currently being considered by US lawmakers. Now, the firm said the Clarity Act, or SCA, which could change the legal status of any asset sold in invest as an investment contract to an investment contract asset would help to provide regulatory, regulatory clarity for cryptocurrencies. In addition, the Digital Community, sorry, Commodity Exchange Act would supplement the SCA when securities laws would not apply to certain token projects, essentially making them more like commodities in a from a regulatory standpoint. Now, the proposed legislation could give the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, or the CFTC, the authority to oversee digital assets exchanges uh, and handling of such commodities. Now, for addressing communication between the public and private sector, Ripple supported the uh, Eliminate Barriers to Innovation Act introduced by Representative Patrick McHenry in April. The bill aims to clarify the role of the SEC and CFTC in the country's efforts to regulate crypto, but would also require the two agencies to establish a working group focused on digital assets. See, I like this. Uh, as I said, we, we can't try and fit this new thing into the old. Now, we're still, the SEC is not going to just simply disappear, and neither is the CFTC. It doesn't work like that, but they should come together and try and come up with new laws and regulations, not try and fit this new thing into the old way, which again doesn't work. There's still parts of, you know, the laws and regulatory aspects that both of these uh, government agencies have that can work but not all of them will work for crypto. So they need to come together. We probably need a new regulatory uh, body built in all fairness. So again, love, hate, Ripple uh, and XRP. We really should be behind them, at least, you know, when it comes to, you know, coming up with regulatory clarity and this case that they are fighting, you know, against the SEC and things like that, because it will benefit all of crypto if we get, you know, better clarity on where the regulatory framework is so yeah i really like that ripple came out with this and i agree with a lot of what they've said and again i'm a ripple fan but you don't have to be but i just i think we all need to get behind ripple 
in this court case at least you know you don't have, again don't like the project don't like the token tokenomics and all the rest of it that's fine you got to do you but we you know as crypto enthusiasts uh, i think we all should be behind them in this case all right brave are about to launch their own uh, native crypto wallets to combat fake extensions so there's fake metamask extensions and things like that so brave browser challenges wallet providers like metamask by introducing a native crypto wallet built into the browser so this is going to be very very interesting now what i found even more interesting is the brave wallet allows users to transact in almost any cryptocurrency so they support chains uh, are supporting all chains compatible with the evm uh, so ethereum virtual machine so polygon x avalanche now bitcoin uh, is also in development and so is solana for next year so this is going to be very interesting i like uh, metamask and i've used it and i've had no uh, great issues with it but they are just kind of not just kind of but the, yeah they're evm compatible so they don't have solana or bitcoin or anything like that and we'll have to wait and see maybe they are going to do things like that i thought i read somewhere that they were looking to integrate other chains but i use the brave browser religiously i hardly use anything else um and this will be very very interesting i'll have to check out the wallet uh and see how it works all right now what i want to show you is what i actually have bought so i bought some engine today now again i didn't throw all my money at it i bought i sold some engine the other day just to take some profits but now that there's been a dip i've bought back in uh, i got a little bit more for basically the money that uh, i put in i didn't take a lot of profits on engine but this is the reason i am still buying back into engine if it was just going to keep running then i was going to let it run but look at how it's performed over the last year big pump consolidation bit of a pump this could be now consolidation here it may come down a little bit lower i wouldn't be surprised if it came back to somewhere around about here two dollars thirty ish again use old uh resistance as support but engine the whole you know the whole nft gaming space metaverse and all that is doing really well and engine basically wrote the well not basically they did they wrote the code for nfts and things like that so i'm a big bull on engine so i bought a little bit of engine today secret network i've told you all about this this has been doing extremely well i got it super cheap uh and i've been staking it so again this is only year to date it had its pump came sound consolidated it's had a pump and now it's coming back down so again I didn't buy in at all-time highs i bought in at around about seven dollars i think it definitely could come down i think it's quite possible it comes back down to five dollars and so i'm just going to keep scaling in but we've got to wait and see this could just the correction could be done and it could rock it up and if it does then i'm not buying anymore i don't need to i've already got a good position in it but if it continues to come down i'm going to be looking to scale in because i think somewhere around this kind of five dollar thirty mark is most likely where it will find some support now again could come lower maybe down to four dollars twenty but again my average buy-in price is super low and i really do like secret network i also bought some chilies again you know chilies and their social tokens and things like that and now they're getting into nfts has done quite well so had this big pump i missed all of this unfortunately i wasn't buying chilies here i bought chilies somewhere in around about here uh, and it pumped up and now it's had a bit of a correction and i get the feeling like it's probably going to do something similar to this it's probably going to go sideways for a little bit because again i don't think the market's going to pump in the next few weeks i don't think bitcoin's going to a hundred thousand by the end of the year i think it's going to be a slow burn look it could do a hundred thousand maybe literally by the end of the year but i don't think it's going to be in a blow-off top fashion but we'll have to wait and see i could be wrong again most of the profits i took the other day uh, that cash is sitting on the side i've just deployed a little bit more back into the market and if we continue to go down then i will continue to scale in on the way down because i don't think this was any blow off top by any means i think it was simply like i said a combination of number one you know the market cap got to that three trillion dollar mark it was a big number and there were too many people going long and they're going to uh short it until all those longs are gone uh yeah all those longs are gone and then they'll just wait to reset and when too many people go long again the same thing will happen but the market will continue to correct itself in both to the upside and to the downside so this isn't the end all right something else i bought is terror 
I got Terra quite cheap. I think I got it something like $6 or something, uh, and it just went crazy. And I've wanted to get back in, so I think I got into it somewhere around about sort of here. No, actually, it was way back here, yeah. This is when I got in, because I've had it for a while, and I've been staking it. And I was going to buy back in here, but I didn't. And then it started to pump, and I've just been waiting for a somewhat reasonable correction. Again, miss this, miss this. So I thought, all right, I'm going to get this. Now I definitely think it could come back down lower. I think it's possible it comes back down to somewhere around about here, sort of 30-ish dollars. So it's going to have a, you know, almost sort of not quite 50% correction, but a good 20 to 30% correction. Now again, never financial advice. This is just what I'm thinking it might do. So I'm going to scale into Luna on the way down because it's performed so well. You know, get rid of your losers is one of the things they say in investing and you know continually bet on the winners now it doesn't mean you continually buy you know all the way up unless you're really convicted but once it reaches a peak and you have a good ret uh, retracement buy back in so again if you saw it get to $44 and then not too long later it was suddenly at $26 I mean that's nearly a 50% correction right there if you really believe in the project, then that's a good time to buy. I'm always looking for things like, you know, 20 plus percent corrections to start scaling back in. And again, this was up at $53 and now it's down at sort of $43. That's not bad. That's not a bad place to start. Now, again, it could just rock it back up or it could keep coming lower. And if it does, I'm planning to scale back in again because I think it's going to go somewhere around sort of down about here. Look, it could come down to about here, $25. And again, I'll just continue to scale in because I don't believe we're at the top. I think this is just a correction. And as I said, two that I'm looking to buy is wax, but the problem is look what wax has just done. You know, it would have been a good idea to get back into wax sort of somewhere over here. So I am waiting to see if it has a big correction. Now, it's one of the biggest movers today. But I just get the feeling like it might come down somewhere back to around about here. So I'll be looking for it to come back down to, you know, really anything below sort of 75 to sort of 60 cents is where I'll start to definitely get back in if it comes back down to there. If it doesn't, then I've just missed it. And likewise, the sandbox, something exactly the same. I think this might be a bit of a double top. We'll have to wait and see. So for me, if it can get down to around about $2.36, no guarantees it does. I'll be looking to scale in somewhere about there. Look, maybe even it gets down to sort of $2.70. That's where I'll be looking to get some. But at the moment, it's just on a pump. So I don't ever want to chase big pumps. But this whole sort of gaming space and NFT space is getting metaverse, is getting bigger and bigger. I missed all of this with Sandbox. I don't want to buy into these big things. And again, it's already on a big pump. So I'm waiting for a retracement to try and find the space. So that's what I've been buying, that's what I'm looking at, and that's what I think is going on in the markets. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all, you know, traveling all right. You're probably not on the game train at the moment unless you're all in on sandbox and wax. Congratulations to you, and I'll see you next time.